could be considered a, a could be considered a best practice. Yeah. Um, hi all. Uh, this is the Flotilla Friday call for uh, May twenty eighth, two thousand twenty one. We were just talking a little bit about the generative commons and commons in general, uh, governance of commons. I don't know if we want to read any of that to the, into the record or. Bill, you could just name check the article maybe, I don't know. Uh, I'll maybe I'll, whatever. It's, it's complicated because it's so different. I'll, uh, it, can, uh, it, it can end up in the generative commons metamost channel too. Yeah, I'll just put it there because it really, in order to make sense out of it from what the kind of, you know, non enclosed non property we're talking about, you got to really do some uh, translations. Indeed. Well, I, I would love to read it, Bill. Hi, we haven't met before. I'm Benjamin. Um, I have actually spent the last two mornings in, with my morning writing sessions uh, writing a white paper for the linked open wisdom commons. Um, so far in the introduction, I have mostly talked about love um, as a metaphor for the commons. Um, so it, it felt appropriate when talking about wisdom to start talking about love. Um, but then I go into Teilhard de Chardin and the no sphere and then go into Tim Berners-Lee and the history of enclosure with the internet. Um, Richard Dawkins, a little bit about mimetics and spiral dynamics. Um, so it's definitely not your traditional white paper, but um, I would love to read other white papers about the commons to see how um, the idea of a wisdom commons might relate to or be informed by other ideas around the commons. Okay, y'all got it. There's the, there's the, I put it in the chat. Uh, and I've got a HackMD up. So for, the, for them that hack MD. Can we use Mattermost perhaps as a preference over Zoom chat? So cool. Benjamin, or if anybody has trouble getting this article, you should let me know and I'll send you a personal copy because it might still be behind the science <clears throat> paywall. I'm, I'm, uh, Charles, I'm thinking Bill wants to write a little bit more and digest That's a little fine. bit more before he posts this uh, manifest. I can manage. I just have to hopscotch. It's okay. Thanks. And and it's in the flotilla. It, it'll be in the flotilla wiki for what that's worth. Cool. I'm just Thank getting such there, Charles man. Charles Dickens vibes right now. This is <laughs> Oh with the bells. So you can hear the bells, right? <laughs> Yeah, we can. Uh, yeah, it, yeah. It's actually <laughs> it's actually Swiss bells, so that that puts me in a yeah. different head. Yeah. Uh oh. <laughs> Indeed. Yeah, I'm here in Zurich, in the old town of Zurich. Um, cool. I was just going to see this here. I, I can read it actually, but uh, and I'll find some more notes back from Kevin Awaki um, related to all this. I think it, I think it's great, by the way, just to um, jump jump in on common stuff here because I think it's. There's so much um, synergy and overlap between these different circles and co uh, coherences of, of conversations um, between sovereigns coalition and generative commons and flotilla and the idea of flotilla in general or flotilla in particular here and all that stuff. Keep a massive, et cetera, et cetera. Anybody else want to go on, on whatever topic? I have it. Maybe it's a quick one. I, and I, I, I um, usually, well, these calls sometimes are very small. It's more, um, it's a pet peeve. It's not a major one, but it's something that's kind of repeated as a pattern, Pete. <laughs> and it's about, and I've, I've 
I've sounded this out slightly before, and it's more like um, when you talk about flotilla, you're always saying me and Vincent. And I um, am and aim to be and want to be uh, just as much an equal part in whatever ways. I am not if, as uh, equal, but, but you know, I, I, yeah. I'm officially on the list, right? So then, you know, what's up with that? I just had to say it. You know? um, I've gotten better even in the past week or, or two. Um, so uh, I heard that from you uh, without you saying it in so many words uh, a couple weeks ago. And uh, so now it's more often uh, Pete and Vincent and Charles. Great. So I, I apologize. That's cool. I've aired it. Um, just checking. Thanks. <laughs> That's all. Great. And, and now, uh, looking at this, the crew here, it, it looks like it should be Pete and, and Vincent and Charles and Bill and Michael and Benjamin and Lauren. You are all near and dear to the uh, flotilla heart. <laughs> Can I ask a question? Mm -hmm. um, so things are heating up with um, Ben Roberts and the... Um, there's like a grant thing, uh, a laboratory. And um, I wanted to see if we could, um, and do for um, going through a grant database and putting opportunities on the calendar. And of course, you know, I'll, I can't wait to dive in and just like transfer over like a, thousand entries um but uh i need a calendar in order to do this and sort of some guidance and i was wondering if you were interested in um in using the calendar for this purpose to kind of combine with resources which are opportunities even though you aren't personally, I know Pete that grants you poo poo the grant thing. You've had a bad experience. <laughs> I understand. I hear that, but I was wondering for Flotilla. Is this something that Flotilla is uh, interested in? Because I have some um, stars lined up in this area. If so, it, it's funny. I it's, so I. Lauren and I and and Charles probably have talked a little bit about. I'm a little bit allergic to grants. Not that I haven't done plenty of grant uh, writing, but now I'm getting allergic to 501c3s. I don't know, man. <laughs> <laughs> um, Just wait for the Swiss for Rhine. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, it's a good question, Lauren. I think the what I, from what I heard, um, grant directory and, and calendar, that sounds a lot like Trove um, and not so much like Flotilla. I don't know if that makes sense. Or yeah, if I missed the question or. Oh, I'm sorry. I got to run letting my girls. <laughs> <laughs> um, Benjamin's uh, while we're waiting, let's wait for Lauren, I think. And and uh, Benjamin you also. Oh. All right, go ahead. I just wanted you to repeat. It sounds a lot like Trove and less like and then I sort of missed. missed uh, Flotilla. Right. I mean, okay. You know, Flotilla yeah. is, is in all that stuff, but but not to the extent Trove is, and maybe actually, yeah. I guess another another layer of the question is like, to what extent is, is Massive Wiki in the mix there also? Yeah, the weird thing is, um, the weird thing is Flotilla doesn't, doesn't feel like a, I guess Flotilla is more maybe a massive human intelligence project and Trove mashup. So sometimes massive wiki is important and sometimes it's not in the Flotilla brain. I'm just wondering as a, as a relative newbie, I know this, is, this is, sounds like it's uh, difficult, but um, just defining our terms and what being part of Flotilla is, the extent to which, um, you know, other entities are part of Flotilla or Flotilla, excuse me, the, 
Um, yeah. I mean, it's, uh, it's a good question. We, we haven't, we haven't, it's, it's an emergent uh, definition. Yeah. So yeah. the original, the original idea was um, uh, Charles and Vincent and me talking about um, uh, directories and matchmaking more or less. Mm -hmm. um, and um, uh, and also a little bit of definitely definitely trove at that at that point it was catalyst um trove is definitely into directories and and matchmaking and then i've got a, an interest in matchmaking which is um uh human matchmaker oriented matchmaking based on power tools um rather than just tools for everybody kind of um so that was kind of where flotilla got started the there's also a big um Flotel has always had a big interest in uh, data interchange. Um, so it's especially between Trove and Massive, but between Trove and Massive, we cover like a wide swath of, you know, um, how do we how do we make sure that we can syndicate data, aggregate data, exchange data between multiple systems and, and things like that. And Trove is nicely structured and Massive Wiki is nicely unstructured. So then, you know, it, it it makes a nice play space in the middle of that. You know, how are we going to keep all this data moving around? So there's still in the back of that, there's that matchmaking component and, you know, a kind of a, a quest or a, a query or trying to understand, you know, what match, matchmaking is and how it hasn't been working and how it's going to start working and things like that. So factor is actually a good, I, it, it's a good mix in in all of that certainly. Cool. Yeah, I mean, I, I I would think so, and and would be happy for it to be, but just you know wanted to, yeah, see if that was okay. <laughs> um, and yeah. and also um, in terms of matchmaking, um, and and connection and human connection, um, I was just wondering if you could define your terms a little bit, bit more, and just in terms actually in terms of non-human matchmaking. Um, the uh, matchmaking, more or less, in the in as in flotilla discussions, has been um, uh, humans getting matched, or humans and projects getting matched. Um, we were talking with somebody who talks in projects, and anyway, I, you know, Vincent's got uh, individuals and projects, um, and. So you match individuals and individuals, and that's pretty much what I'm looking for too. You know, there's resources or organizations or work groups or you know other other people that are interesting. Um, uh, I, Vincent and I are also both really interested in groups. Um, so less you know person to resource is interesting but person to group and groups to groups and things like that is is much more interesting i guess I, the, the one that i was thinking of was link sdg um i still haven't done a report out to flotilla for link sdg let me put that on the, the agenda list at least um but link sdg is also a, it's a another group that we kind of bumped into a little bit and they're one of the re things that they realized um, they've got kind of a different focus of us from us, but their their idea is to use the LinkedIn graph um, with some fanciness around getting access to the LinkedIn graph. But then once you once they've got the LinkedIn graph, the the pathology that they notice is a big nonprofit and a big nonprofit don't talk to each other. You know they they don't have enough. They're not interested enough in the outside world to bump into each other and get something done. Done. So, they're they're interested in linking up individuals or individuals to projects, and then an, an individual with a project in a big nonprofit can link up with you know they can go find another individual with a project in an, in a big nonprofit, and so that's where the juice is for them too. Very similar to to where um, Vincent and I are, and I think Charles actually. So Charles uh, Charles and and Lauren and Kiko Lab is another project that's got you know groups and resources and they're they do human matching so then the i uh, since i've go ahead charles yeah I, I just wanted to kind of um 
interject a, a, a meta frame, uh, another way to answer, uh, um, and I don't want to interrupt really, but the, in terms of um, this non-human matchmaking and kind of looking ahead um, in the really not too distant future in terms of matchmaking and a whole bunch of other things, I was really taken by uh, video, um, in the podcast interview that that's just the audio on the video, um, uh, which is really highly recommended. And um, it's about this uh, brain, um, hum human brain and computer interfacing and just really uh, how far along it is and how fast it's going and what's coming and a bunch of stuff. And I think I would love to come back to that maybe before we finish today. Um, and um, sorry, these bells are going again. Um, the, uh, the the thing the thing I'm trying to get out here, I was sharing also a little bit with, with you, Pete and Lauren today uh, is in terms of Flotilla and Kiko Lab and sort of our coherence of coalition of sovereigns, et cetera, et cetera. Um, our window is is um, in some ways really defined by by the time that that's not quite ready. If that makes any sense, like I, I could say, I'm going to try to say it better. But um, yeah, I think that, Charles, that I, while we don't while we don't have fully um, integrated in all the systems and structures and, and society yet, we have an opportunity to be people and to deal with the people stuff. But it's a it's a quite a short window. And I think this is really critical. I just came to this like yesterday today, so that's enough for, for me for right now. I, I didn't yeah. quite catch that last part, Charles. Maybe I could summarize Vincent, my response. if you want to, yeah, go for it. Yeah, so I think what Charles is trying to say, which is also a sentiment that I've felt, is uh, <laughs> there's kind of like a period right now where putting technology out there that is like ahead of the innovation curve um, is like not too hard um, because the kind of like current big players like Facebook and Google, like they're not doing a great job at matchmaking and connecting. Um, but in like five years, once there's gonna be a kind of like an exponential increase in the ability of like AI and specific types of large data processing technologies that I think Charles is alluding to, we have a, kind of like a window to be able to get these technologies out there before they kind of get overlapped by the innovation curve. And, and whoever kind of has the most data or whatever, you know, um, federated groups have the most data are also going to be able to be on that AI innovation curve because you kind of need data to train the, the models, right? So that's something that also I've been thinking about that it's like, yeah, I don't think I could wait five years and then work on Trove. I think by then the connections would probably be done good enough by some AI that maybe the human connecting it would be a lot harder to do it to start doing it in five years I, I think there's more potential for it now i just want to add one thing which kind of puts really a, a, a point on it or maybe sharpens the picture um, um so just talking on the individual level we're talking literally like jacking uh you know the wires into your brain essentially i don't know i haven't looked into this stuff it, it personally really doesn't interest me so, but it's happening and this guy on this one, it's like about 20 minutes out of a longer interview that it, he really nails it. He's really, really good. Um, um, very efficient um, capture of like what's happening and, and where it's going and how fast it's going. But the, the thing that really stood out in particular is um, those, those that are augmented and those that are not. There's gonna be, he used the word stacking. There's gonna be a stacking of these different types of people and the ones that are augmented, they're gonna literally be flying faster and better in you know every sector, everywhere, at every level. And then that kind of bifurcation or or you know um, se segmentation of population and, and systems and industry and military and everything else is just gonna all that stuff that's gonna be augmented is gonna be even more exponential. And so the 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 the, the polarization. The fragmentation will also be ex exponential. Um, I, I've got stuff I, I want to say into that, but um, but anybody else first? I just wanted to ask Charles if you're talking about the gray Newell, um, the gray gray Newell video. Is that what you're referring to? Exactly. Yes. yes. 
from five minutes to 25 minutes. Okay. I think I didn't even make the full, you know, to the end, but it, it, of that part, it, I got, I had enough. Like it was just, whoa, he really nails it. Even just 10 minutes, it's like so laser. I really recommend it. Um, Bill? Yeah, there's just one thing that came up when Charles was talking about, and I think also uh, Vincent about getting ahead. There was a book written on the end of the 90s, early 2000s, aughts by a philosopher at the University of uh, Montana, Albert Borgman, and it was called Crossing the Postmodern Divide. And the thing that I remember from reading this book is that his main, one main critique he had, which I thought was spot on, was saying that, you know, we're in, the, we're building a world now that is going to be divided between his little words, the hyperactive and what I read from it, the despondent. So there is a way in which this fast, exponential, tech-driven growth, I mean, Charles alluded to it, is not, it's not going to polarize the world, it's going to divide the world even more than it's in an unequal way, even more than it is now. And that for me, socio-politically is not, that's, I don't, I'm not, uh, I'm not sanguine about the outcome of that. Hy hyperactive versus what? I just said despondent. He uses a different word, but when I read it, I had an emotional reaction to this book and I said, oh, I know what he's saying. Yep. It's like, oh, there are all the A-listers and I'm sitting here with a can of beans. Yeah, well, whatever. You know. I mean, I can go look it up and get a little more. He's a little more accurate, but for me, the sensibility I thought was really spot on. Um, uh, Mark Antoine, would it be okay if I went first? Um, so, uh, so this is really interesting to me, and and it it's a I, I think it's a big area of existential concern and things like that, but I think um, you know largely it's been happening for five or ten years, depending on how you count already. So um, uh, the the last U.S. presidential election, not the most recent one, but the one before that, um, where we had a lot of I. A lot of interference um, is a really good example. For instance, face, so Facebook already is doing um, what Vincent's talking about with the AI matching, right? They've been doing that for 10 or 15 years um, where they know everybody's graph and they're always mixing and sorting and stuff like that. And how can we use your endorphins against you to make you get suck more people into Facebook, right? So that's been a thing and it's gonna continue to be a thing it's going to get worse. Um, it's mostly undirected. So Facebook didn't know what they were doing. Um, they th they kind of thought they knew what they were doing, but they just they just like mucked everything up by by strapping rockets to things that they didn't really understand. Right. So I I am less sanguine than than I think Vincent. Um, and since he's not sitting there, I, I feel a little bit. I, I I hope I'm not talking behind his back. Um, uh, I, I guess that's not my intent. My intent is not to, but I, I, I feel differently about it. Um, uh, we're already in that mess. Um, the, part of the reason we're so hyper divided, uh, in the U S right now is because of that mess. The AIs have gotten us into that people, people driving AIs sometimes on purpose and sometimes not on purpose have created a lot of the rift that, that we've got. And they, they're, doing it every day still. So um, the thing that, that I worry about, the, the thing that I, I don't see humans, I don't see humans amping up their wisdom because they have control of more data, faster data, and, and they're, they're more hyperactive. So I think, I, I don't see, you know, I, I'm not worried about in five years, like, human matchmaking is going to be um, overtaken by machine matchmaking because we're not smart enough to set it up that way. So I think 
I, the way the way it looks to me is that maybe there's a bunch of us in this federated humans kind of thing that can start to learn how to get smart enough together and operate together that we can kind of level up the way humans work together. And that's going to help humans interacting with humans driven by AIs that are just going fast, maybe. Um, and that's that's kind of the, the war that I see coming. Um, war is kind of a big word and, and actually kind of a small word for this. Um, the, it, it, it's just, we're not going to get to a place where people driving things faster or, or AIs let, letting thing, people drive things faster is going to make them smarter or make them more wise. So I guess maybe the, for, for me, hyperactive is actually a good word. Thanks, Bill. There's, there's that hyperactivity, you know, Facebook can do a lot of stuff and it can do it super fast and it can't drive that in, intelligently at all. And we have to figure out how to get people like the folks in this room thinking smarter, thinking faster, thinking deeper and taking intelligent actions against that kind of hyperactivity, right? So I guess it's the hyperactive and the despondent and the, the wise. I hope that we're on, on the wise part and AI isn't gonna be wise for a while. Maybe it will be someday, but not for a while. So that's kind of where I'm at. Um, oh, someone else wants to go first. I was just gonna double click on that, Peter. And a lot of what I'm writing about in the wisdom commons is this distinction between uh, knowledge and wisdom. And there's something very, um, grounded and tactile uh, uh, about wisdom that I'm trying to articulate that's um, a kind of using that contrast um, and, and seeing how the infrastructure of the web can be used for many different things, but the, that the wisdom part um, happens at the embodied level, at the relational level, at the contextual level. And so um, having these federated networks of sovereigns that are grounded into um, their context um, and then using the infrastructure to share insights from that context but then adapting them locally um, that to me is the strategy that i feel most inspired by and is something that a computer can't do is is like read that full multi-dimensional context of, of the human being um, yeah so i just wanted to double click on that i yeah have a few reserves actually uh, i i agree first with the distinction of course uh I think that okay. There, I, I spoke about uh, in the in the chat about the whole question of inequality and uh, like we've seen uh, augmentation of capital inequality uh, of but there's a I I observe an augmentation of knowledge inequality. Like now all knowledge is accessible to everybody. And yes, I know it's only this propositional knowledge, uh, but it's also social knowledge. It's also, you can in theory connect to everybody in theory, of course. Uh, and some people use that to great advantage and really grasp things and become more connected and become more knowledgeable. And some of them even become more wise. Whether fast or wise, both happen. And some and the, the, the notion of the despondent, yes, I relate to that. I think it has nothing to do with neural link. It's people react in different ways to abundance of possibilities. And some people really thrive on it. And some people, oh, it's all there. Why should I bother? I'll get it when I need it. And don't build the capacity. Uh, and certainly, I have a fear that there's such a strong, um, I believe in augmentation. I believe in making these augmented human networks that can beat the, how should I put it? Let me call it the Borg, uh, by which I mean not so much the machine. The, I don't, I don't, I'm not that worried about the, uh, Skynet AI taking over by itself, but I certainly believe in people using big data to manipulate and to uh, augment their power exponentially. That I believe is a, we're seeing it now. Uh, and, and we need to 
find a way to build things that is not in this logic of capitalist uh, accretive um, uh, system. The the but on the on the other hand, I'm saying the how we are fighting a system that's very good at what it's doing, which is this accretion. And wisdom alone is not just the answer. Uh, I like the idea of, yes, something grounded in real land, real community that I do believe in also, but we do have to have the links. Like we have to have a way to make the links between those communities that goes beyond the local but in a way that does not erase the local. Uh, and this is the difficulty of wisdom, like how to be grounded yet connected. Uh, I don't have a quick answer to that, but the question of what gets erased in the connection, in the way we connect, in the way we abstract is absolutely fundamental. Uh, but we must never lose sight of the fact that people who are choosing to erase the information and go totally global have enormous power from this erasure. And uh, saying, oh, we're wiser won't, won't be enough. That's, sorry, I'm being vague and uh, I'm being vague and all over the place and I don't have a conclusive answer. I'm just pointing out a problem here, but I think it's there. Totally off topic. Uh, I have information relevant to Flotilla, but I think let this conversation go over. I just to, want to make to an which? agenda point. To Flotilla. <laughs> gotcha. Uh, I'll say it because it's one one link, really. I, wa I'm, I was in another unrelated conversation with people who are doing this, uh, people from Icarizal, among other people. But I saw that there's been this amazing effort in France to have uh, connecting communities and doing something very much like Trove. Uh, it's called Communicte, but it's driven by the people at Open Atlas. The Open Atlas site doesn't have enough information, but there are definitely people to talk to because they're doing this, let's connect the people doing things effort. And it's ongoing and it's very advanced actually. End of parenthesis. So people to talk to. Et peut-être on peut faire l'événement des commons, c'est self, on peut, on peut, en fait, on peut, on peut le faire en français aussi, ça sera cool. Éventuellement, but we will have a different attendance, yes. But yeah, I, I, I'm talking to a, to, to a few people in France who are in this space also, and there's a, there's a lot happening there. Uh, plus, uh, Peter, you were at yesterday's uh, meeting, and I think uh, keeping in touch with what uh, Catherine is doing is absolutely important, but that's another discussion. Back to our conversation on oh. the massive AI and the board. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Marc-Antoine, before, um, before we leave you, uh, can you type in also the community word? Community, yes. The, the, but community, it's the social network part. What's important is how Open Atlas does a lot of initiatives that all tie together and community is one component. Gotcha. So you have, and, but I don't think the grand vision is well explained anywhere, which is a bit annoying. Okay, sorry, over. Uh Keep going on the, the humans and the Borg or, or pick up on Benjamin's uh, link between Trove and Massive Wiki. Well, I, I brought that forward just to offer a potential way to ground. Uh, yeah, how do we begin to coordinate beyond the Borg? Um, and a lot of what I've been thinking about is derived in many ways from our conversations, Peter, around um, how to link the the wikis of these groups of sovereigns. Um, I see myself in kind of the social role and also in the storytelling role trying to, there's been so many communities that I've felt frustrated with because they're, they're perhaps unintentionally enclosing uh, a section of the commons, of the wisdom commons 
because they need to make a profit in their coaching business or their consultancy. And mm -hmm. so what I really want is the tool to be able to say, hey, come onboard your community onto Trove. Here's how you can start creating your sovereign knowledge graph integrated into the connectome that Trove provides so that then you can start to see, oh, maybe our what we're contributing to the commons might be able to link um, through Trove to these other sovereigns. Um, and, and that's where the kind of clusters of um, sovereign knowledge graphs um, would be able to interface and begin to federate. Um, and so, and, yeah, and I'm just curious how, how, yeah. And can you mix Massive Wiki in, into there? Yes, that's that's what I was trying to allude to Massive Wiki. That was my, uh, that was the implication there was that it would be through Massive Wiki on the back end, but Trove is some sort of interface or, yeah, I'm not sure exactly how the, the they play with each other. And that's sort of what I wanted to um, maybe get some collective intelligence going around what might be needed to do that. Um, what, yeah, what the roadmap to get there would be, what kind of support you guys might need um, in, in getting there, if that feels like an aligned vision. Um, and I wonder if Vincent, if you're around. I also have something to add here. Uh, so I think this is a good discussion. We should wait for Vincent. Um, but Charles, go ahead. Yep. Um, yeah, I mean, it just it's, it's kind of um, an extension of, of Ben's wonderful prompt and, and way to like cohere and harmonize um, just to add uh, PicoLab in the mix uh, in whatever ways, you know, we're, we're useful and we can contribute, um, but we're already doing a lot of stuff with Trove and less so yet with Massive in a, in a coherent way, but we, we definitely um, want to embrace, you know, all and be, be um, this kind of living bridge, if you will. So we can help um, work out the conversation uh, by just being the, the sandbox. Or one of one of the main sandbox that already is is uh, using or wanting to use more of these things, and we have the community. We got the the regular processes and all that. To to kind of ground into this metaphor, um, I I can see Kiko Lab being um, working at kind of like the cultural operating system level. Um, part of what I've been writing about is the need for. Um, an epistemological commons and an ontological commons to, to kind of emerge simultaneous to the wisdom commons so that um, as we're creating wisdom together, we actually have shared frameworks and practices and protocols for how we participate in the commons. And I feel like you've already been doing that and then playing with lots of different frameworks for collective intelligence that um, if, you're, if you were taking on a stewardship at the cultural level of onboarding new sovereigns, um, into how to practice collective intelligence, I think that that cultural contribution would be massive. Cool, that's definitely one of our missions, but you articulated it well, so thanks. And and Benjamin, the epistemological commons and ontological commons. So um, yeah, the ways that we know and the ways of being uh, that we uh, participate in the, the knowledge creation or the wisdom creation process with. So, um, yeah. And I, that's I a conversation I'd love to have. <laughs> <laughs> can, I, can I throw in here? I think one way that, that overlaps but doesn't, you know, doesn't duplicate some of what's being discussed here, that fits in with factors, um, potential use and, and support of this is, not the, the, the how we know and the who knows and the who needs to interact with who as much as the what we have discovered and who has connections to that. And just this, this library in which the granules of knowledge um, are accruing um, with the uh, the action, the actions that the people who are working in Trove, who are working in, you know, Massive Wiki, who are working in organizations, who Pico Labs, uh, you know, I don't, I, all the entities, it, any entity 
um, helping on the on the library accumulation and um, is is more of our motivation. And we think about groups um, as an important facet of that, but really driving it all from the granular information end. Um, so I don't know how that works works in, but I, I just want to throw that notion out there. Um, I like that. I like that a lot. And I don't don't know. I don't have a good pithy short phrase for it. But so one of the one of the things ontological commons makes me think of the so massive wiki in some sense is an, an embracing um a bunch of mess basically um so ontological commons scares me a little bit because it seems like you kind of want to like sift things together and make them make sense and part of mass what massive wiki wants to do and i'm actually inspired every time i hear uh, mark antoine talking about different you know different knowledge representations and how to map, map them together but uh i think a lot of massive wiki is um, it's okay to make a mess um, and it's okay not to make the semantics uh, align very well. Um, it's more important to get everything out in the middle and mixing around. Um, <laughs> thanks, Lauren. Lauren's pulling a Jamin, huh? <laughs> yeah. I just want to say that ontology, it means two different things in different contexts. Um, I'm more referencing um, the the ways of being um, and that to me is our practices like circling um, like um, integral dialectic um, not like upper ontologies for structured data um, just to distinguish between those ways of yeah. being as in Bruno Latour sorry ways of being as in Bruno Latour modes of existence you might you might have to say Bruno Latour in English my connection's dropping <laughs> or maybe it's just the Wi-Fi. Uh, yeah, Br Bruno Latour in uh, Bruno Latour work, uh, work on modes of existence for ways of being. Is that what you're referring to, or another idea of ways of being? Uh, I, I think that's accurate. Uh, between the accent and the poor connection, I'm not sure that I'm tracking, but I, <laughs> I think we're talking about the same thing. I'll go to the chat. Yeah. The, 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 it is true that the ontology of uh, computer science, RDF, OWL, what uh, you called propositional knowledge earlier, and I agree with you, that's a very limited mode of knowledge, uh, is not the same as the, the, the big modes of existence ontology. Uh, I agree totally. On the other hand, I think it is, we're all using language uh, also. And sometimes there are things which are ineffable, which are beyond language. But on the other hand, we can still use language to point at it. And um, the ability to express this beyond in language without too much erasure, I think is kind of part of the difficulty of negotiating uh, otherness. And now, now to get back to the messy wiki, because that's important. Um, it is true that when you're trying to harmonize views of the world, you have to express them in the way that is not uh, formal. Uh, like, yeah, not fully formalized yet, because nothing is fully formalized. It's always degrees of formalization. Uh, but on the other hand, I do believe that even progressive partial formalization helps in the process of alignment. And that's been my premise. Uh, alignment without formalization usually creates more mess. Uh, but that's a standpoint. I may be wrong. I, I like that a lot, Mark Antoine. But certainly, yeah, you never wait for full formalization. It never happens. It's asymptotic. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Okay, thanks, Benjamin.
build it. Yeah, just to clarify a bit more what I what I mean by ontology, um, there's a phenomenological quality to the we space. Um, I, I really love John Verveke, uh, um, who created a whole series of uh, basically the history of human cognition. Um, and he, it, it, the series is called Awakening from the Meaning Crisis. Um, and he describes the, the crisis of shared meaning as kind of the meta crisis in which our ecological crisis, our political crises, all kind of are situated within. And um, he's after completing that 50 part series in the history of human cognition, he's now uh, looking into the future um, to try to create an ecology of practices that support collective intelligence. Uh, and so he's been doing a lot of work primarily in the Boulder community. He's based in Toronto um, in these kind of uh, collective intelligence experiments. Um, and so having a, a, a glossary or a set of those practices that can be drawn on by different communities, different sovereigns that want to um, create wisdom together. Um, that's that's what I mean by an ontological commons. Gotcha, Perfect. thanks. Recently came on my radar and I do need to go through his work. Yes, thank you. The, I'm going to blurt out something random. Massive Wiki needs more people doing Massive Wiki. Hi. Um, yeah, cool. uh, so Obsidian is a wonderful uh, Massive Wiki client. It turns out there's another app that's on iOS and Android called Git Journal, which is also a very nice Massive Wiki uh, client. Um, so, Heat? Yes. I'm sorry. Can, can we bring the conversation? down a little bit a little bit easier for me <laughs> and, massive wiki yeah can we discuss like what we can do with massive like what does it allow us to do that we couldn't do before and i'm sorry charles i didn't mean to budge in front of you because you have your hand raised i don't know if that was from before no it's yes. weird it was from before i i it's yeah no worries thanks uh i got it for charles um uh, it's it's a good question, Lauren, and and I I would probably just take that offline. I uh, that's good homework for me, um, and maybe Bill, um, and actually Wendy Elford and I are working on exactly that. Um, uh, we're actually working on the thing before that, you know, um, uh, uh, the a, a big thing of what Wendy and I are working on is how to make it how how to keep it from being anti-relevant to somebody's life in the first you know minute or, or so when you're talking about something it's like okay pete I, I got work to do i'm sorry you know it's interesting it sounds sounds cool come back to me with you know i don't know well, hold on pete, hold on both both of you are not getting off so easy but like, <laughs> like i guess no there might there must be like a quick answer to uh, i'll just say it like from kiko lab's view Okay, we're like almost there, and there must be something we can we can uh, like do to to, to expand or, uh, and and get our practice going, and we already put a few things on the table like the collaborative granting thing, which we already talked eons ago about about the wiki thing somehow. So I don't know where that's got to or where it's at or where it can go, but there's something there. We don't have to go totally like scurry back to our, our corners and and be you know sort of. Uh, you know, sulking or whatever, that's just silly. I, 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 um, I, I, I've been doing wiki for long enough that, well, you can do, see the, the answer I have. Too. I'm talking to you. Yeah. Too, you know. uh, thank you, Charles. Um, uh, my answer is, well, there's, I, you know, actually now that I, I just got whisked back. Um, this is going to be funny, kind of. Um, I got whisked back to 1978 uh, when I was at the um, uh, bite shop in Reno, Nevada. Um, I was still in high school. Um, and, 
and the way I saw it, the, the owner of the bike shop and, and I were good friends. Um, I had this really long hair. He said, uh, Pete, treasure your long hair. Um, it, it, I said, should I cut it so that I can look more professional in your store? You know, because I felt a little self-conscious. And he's like, no, Pete, someday you're going to look like me. <laughs> Keep your long hair as long as you can. So from my point of view, um, I was in Reno, Nevada, trying wanting to do computers. And my choice in high school was uh, uh, a dial-up modem at a, at 75 baht, I think, literally connected to a teletype machine. Um, talking to a, a mini computer at University of Nevada. So that was my one choice. Another choice was sneaking into the computer lab where they had glass terminals that ran at 300, maybe 1200 baht or something like that. That was super cool. But then I could go to the bike shop and I could play on an Apple II and I could play on an MSI 6800 with, with toggle switches and stuff like that. So I got to play with computers. I was in hog heaven. I was doing all kinds of programming. I was doing literally one bit digital sound on the, the Apple II um, and you know all kinds of stuff, making graphics and bird songs and, and wonderful things. So people would come into the shop and say, and, and they would say, I've heard these computers are going to be big someday. What can you do with them? And I would stumble around and I, I had the same answer. You know, it's like the answer I want to say is it's amazingly cool and it changes the way you think and it lets you do, an, you know, just like it, it lets you move into information space, you know, but nobody knows what information space means. So uh, so I would start to blurt that out and then I would have to stop myself and I would say Chuck told me that the thing that people are going to use computers for is to balance their checkbook. So that was what would come out of my mouth. I think you can use these computers to balance your checkbook. I don't know what else you can use them for. You know, <laughs> I could I could show you me dancing around with computer graphics and sound, digital sound and stuff like that. You know, if you want to come over and watch me over my shoulder, but it, it doesn't make any any sense at that time in Reno, Nevada, in 1978, for people to do that. So wikis is kind of the same thing. It's it drops you into an information space that is mind expanding and lets you do and think things that you can't think otherwise. And then if it's a massive wiki, you can do that with not just you, but with lots of people. And the massive wikis have a, this cool thing where the, the information kind of floats around between, I've got a couple dozen massive wikis on my computer right now. It floats around between your massive wikis and their massive wikis and other people's massive wikis. And it's just this like filter flow of this cool information soup that changes the way you think, changes the way that you can perceive the world, um, you know, lets you be uh, a collective intelligence with more people better. So that part, that, that last part, you know, that's, it, it goes pretty quickly from, yeah, I see that happening between, between me and Bill and Rob and, and Jerry on, you know, OGM Wiki or Massive Wiki Sandbox. The rest of it is kind of aspirational. You know, I, I've seen little bits of it, but we're not there yet. It's not actually happening. And back to my kind of ask or whatever, um, mass, we need more people doing Massive Wiki. Huh? I have a question. I, I'm going to be a bit obnoxious because I'll be very honest. I don't think a new wiki is really what we need to parse collective intelligence on a larger scale. I may be wrong, but that's not my intuition, but that's okay. But the, the, the great intuition of the original wiki was to have uh, one nugget of information, one page per theme and the themes, the way they were defined using phrases, using camel case phrases was a good way because it was a kind of above the word level, but below the sentence level. It was a kind of, if we put these things together, we have a nice conceptual unit and let's make that a page and let's make the links between those pages. That was the original intuition. But the Wii was originally a single person affair, then it became a multi-person affair with media wiki and versioning. Uh, and versioning is how they solved the collaborative aspect. And then Ward went on a totally different direction with FedWiki, where many people can have a page about a concept. And you can start actually doing uh, DNA recombination by moving paragraphs between versions of pages. And uh, 
that's his way of solving the collaboration. Like the media wiki is there's one version, but there's history. The Fed wiki way is there's multiple version and we can move things around, but each person has their own. And the massive wiki as I understand it is the GitHub uh, fork and, uh, you know, uh, diff merge and pull, which I believe in strongly. Uh, I think diff, you know, the whole technology of diff merge, but I don't know if we're, I don't know if you have a good model of divergence and convergence because ultimately in a Git, there's kind of one version and the whole logistics of dealing with where does the community diverge and where does it converge and what are the points of agreement and disagreement is not, it's, it's explicit in the branch view, but nobody sees the branch view. So how to make that ex impl explicit in the massive wiki representation? Uh... Hey, thanks for that, Mark Antoine. Um, and I'm gonna have to go back to the recording and like play it over a couple times. Um, the the in, in, an interesting thing is we're not really up to fork and pull yet. Um, uh, we're we're still on mono branch, mono whatever. Um, so that we are going to media wiki. No, Sorry, I, I, it's I, actually <laughs> it's actually different. Um, and the difference is that um, so. So I hope that I, I know actually I know that massive wiki is going to get to the place where we're doing branches and we're doing forks and poles and stuff like that. Um, uh, it seems like it keeps getting farther and farther away. But anyway, it's going to happen. The thing that we're doing right now that's different than media wiki is files, actually. So me, uh, massive wiki is all about files. So it's not just that I have a wiki that I contribute to, it's that I have a bunch of text files on my computer. And so it's so what I do now with a massive wiki is um, I'm gonna use a, a terminology that I'm, I, I, I don't, every time it comes up, I'm not comfortable using it, but the, the massive wikis on my computers have sex with each other. Um, so what I do is I make a new massive wiki that's, you know, some different different topic or different something like that. And I just drag and drop a bunch of files over. So it it atomizes a, a media wiki ends up feeling like this massive database and a massive wiki ends up feeling like a bunch of text files that I know how to manage. And, and even a lot of folks who aren't super familiar with computers they know that they download things and that they have a my documents folder and that you can drag stuff and make folders of those and so all of that file management stuff is is kind of like you know the it's it's a foundational level for massive wiki it's just files so that's where we are right now and it's it's actually pretty good and it feels much different than using um, a media wiki um, and now that now that you talk about fed wiki it's interesting um, fed wikis have sex with each other. Different people's fed wikis have sex with each other uh, by copying blocks around to each other, right? So I'm doing the same thing, but it's file level, and it's it can be on my computer or it can be on somebody else's computer. Um, I actually did uh, just this week. Um, uh, I've got somebody who's not not super not super up on computer stuff, so we didn't. She's got an Obsidian that she's working with. Um, and I haven't even gotten close to wanting to set her up on Git or anything like that. So we did a, I told her, okay, now um, go over to your, she doesn't think of it as a finder window, but go over to your uh, documents folder and right click on the thing that says, you know, Obsidian Vault and, and select compress. So we did a zip transfer. So she zipped up her thing, um, sent it to me, and then I unzipped it and made a bunch of changes and zipped it and sent it back. So, um, so anyway, uh, someday, I, someday we'll get to um, uh, uh, Git and fork and pull, and then I really like the the thing that you said. How do we, you know, how do we break stuff up, and how do we put stuff back together? Yeah. I'm not there yet. The, the the thing with working at file level is it cannot be massive, right? You're bounded by one computer. I mean, downloading Wiki, uh, Wikipedia is possible, but that's pretty much your whole computer's capacity. Uh, think yeah. 
think of having Wikipedia. I mean, I'm sorry, I'm being, I'm being a bit, you know, uh, Silicon Valley-ish and saying, let's think of scaling. Um, and I understand the advantage of having a human scale thing, but I'm interested in the community scale thing. And what you say about, I understand what's going on in my file system, that's good for the human scale thing, but the moment it becomes community, eek, that breaks down. The human intuition breaks down beyond a certain community size. Uh, my, my hope there is, is that we'll be able to, so, so my hope there uh, at community scale is that then we go over to fork and pull and, and essentially GitHub basically, right? GitHub okay. fork and pull and, um, and the discussion threads that they have for uh, issues and uh, per pull requests and things like that. So I th it's an interesting thing when you say community scale, I, uh, people aren't very good at, at managing community scale. Um, but I also see it being really effective to use uh, GitHub collaboration, GitHub style collaboration. GitHub has um, been a huge advance in, in co collaboration methodology. Yeah. Um, only for software developers as yep. of yet. Um, yeah, yeah. But, it's a, and it's a discipline. I mean, I'm right now in a new team and getting people, no, no, this is how you use Rebase. This is how you use the pull request. This is how, it's even with developers. Not yep. everybody knows how to do it right. Yep. It's a training. Then, it's a skill. And then here's the standards we need to to work with, and in, in uh, their coding standards and linters and stuff like that, and in, in code. Which is another layer, yes. Um, but in in text, it'll be you know social social principles and social conventions around yep. you know how we chunk stuff and how we name stuff, and so um, I think we'll get. Well, I know that we'll get there with Massive Wiki, and I, that's my answer to community scale is GitHub style collaboration. Bill. Yeah, hi. Um, I got to run in a few minutes, but so the thing that came up when you we were, since Lauren was talking about, you know, what's the deal? Yeah. So my experience with wikis, which is go back, you know, goes back to the 90s and stuff, but they really do separate people. Some people really jump in. This is like fantastic. Let's do it. But even now with people I've known for a long time, the idea about, hey, let's just share our stuff and do things together over here. Everybody's like, yeah, it sounds good, but uh, um, I'll get back to you. Yeah. And, uh, you know, Pete, you've heard this, but a colleague that I know wrote a really interesting paper from a psychoanalytical perspective about, tech, about knowledge work in the 21st century. And his point was that knowledge work is personal. And because it's personal, the kinds of issues that come up go all the way back to each of us individuals as ourself. And so some of them can be quite anxiety provoking, a little too close for comfort. And I think that what you're asking for, Pete, and I'm perfectly willing to jump in because, you know, maybe I'm less defended than I used to be. But, um, <laughs> I just think it really, this came up in the generative comments the other day, like, how do we protect? We're not having any closure, but we need, I mean, but it's, you know, we're humans. We need boundaries, regardless of whether we're protecting anything or nothing. Yeah. Right. We just, you know, if you live with dogs, they need boundaries too, you know, <laughs> just don't get too close and we're all good. Um, so I just think this is. I don't know how to deal with it. We really need to hone in the fact we are talking about something very um, important for our, each of us as individuals. And our, and I think just Massive Wiki puts it out there. And people will, I mean, you know, go back away. I, I don't know. It's, I don't know what to say, except I think it, we're at this stage and uh, we have to manage it, you know. So I got to run another could... couple of minutes because it's time for lunch here in the Central Texas area. I have just a quick thing to add, which is, uh, I, I guess, um, it just it goes back to kind of uh, where we started a bit with the AI stuff and the essentially the 
the incredible power and you know inevitable weaponization of this stuff and you know Lauren and I talk about this all the time and that's part of it's a big part of a lot of these pattern jams that you know where we're kind of going into uh, the minutia of, of you know social the social mess the the norms of social mess um, but um, I don't have anything really uh, pithy or coherent to say other than just to, to kind of flash this dimension that um, the, there's a protection um, needed. It, it, maybe I'm speaking to, you know, to the, it, it's obvious, but um, it's really razor's edge situation. It needs to be both, you know, open and closed. I think that's uh, where we are on planet Earth right? in the 21st century. No, I mean, no, that, Lauren, it you is can fundamental. do so much better than me. Th thank you, Bill. The, the question of, translucent work, right? Because the reason I've noticed that many people resist collaborative tools is your reputation's at stake, ultimately. When you put something out, it's a form of publishing. And uh, if you, there is a stage in every work where you're thinking for yourself, it's tentative, and you'll only show it to people who you trust that will apply the Gricean maxim and treat it with charity and find all the big holes for you before it's made public. And, and that's perfectly natural because we are all protecting our reputation from, let's say, less benevolent uh, communication, which is, again, a norm in a status society. It's, and it's a reality. So we have to be able to say, okay, this is, and, and I find like so many communication systems. Don't get this. Like I look at uh, the, the chat system where we have public and private channels. No, we need draft channels. So this is private until it's well put together enough that we can say, okay, this is the finished product. This was private because it's the before and I don't want to show this crap to anybody. <laughs> but now this, I don't want to have to copy everything over. I want to be able to say this part of the conversation is where we were gelling on something and make that part public. Mm -hmm. Nobody does that. But yeah. this notion of progressive publicity is extremely important. I'm sorry, I got to run. So Michael, Thanks, I hope you're yeah, I hope you whatever you say gets somehow included in the chat. Great to be with y'all. I'll, I'll run as well, I think. Thanks, Mark oh. Antoine. Ciao, ciao. Mark, Mark Antoine, I yeah. really want to respond to what you're saying, if I can catch you before you go, um, just because you're speaking to something that is is really meaningful in my thinking about factor and, and how factor fits into this world that it's key to have a place that you function with your own information in single player mode um, and you're you're gathering organizing creating information and you might do that alone and then you might do that in a group that you share yeah and then that group might do it with a peer group and then that group of peer groups might do it with a, a general interest community and ultimately with the public but having that control to say the granular control to say this is something i'm working on that i'm going to keep completely alone with me this is something i'm ready to share with the group this is something i'm ready to share in this way this is something i'm inviting comment on this is something i'm not inviting comment on and i mean that that those mechanics, that interface is something that we we have built. So, you know, I, I want that to be widely available in this in this world. Um, yeah. And I'm, you know, that interaction should be enabled. The thing that's important to uh, to do also, I think, is to take those artifacts that people have created and allow them to choose to share or not share the, the kind of attendant metadata. Like if you gathered a bunch of links, images, whatever it was that contributed to your information, somebody else froze there, all that information that creates 
cutting out your uh, cutting sorry. out. Um, I'll, I'll share some of what I'm. Uh, uh, I'll try to uh, I'll try to share some of this in writing too. Um, yeah, if, if, anyway. it would be lovely to have you uh, write that up, Michael. Yeah, okay. I, I saw some of that in your demo last time we we met, and yes, uh, I think you really got a lot of that going. I'm very impressed with that. There's a, um, a GitHub style collaboration does a lot of that stuff too. Um, uh, you know, private, um, semi-private, translucent, um, and and it also lets you people uh, lets you give a branch to people and let them comment and tweak it, but not not necessarily change the copy that you have until you start to feel okay that that okay now we can collaborate on this and you can actually change stuff and it's now it's a little bit more in between us. For so, all in this space, you're aware of underscore protocol? Yes, um, but only a little, um, and only from you, actually. <laughs> uh, underscore protocol is, it's interesting because it's, it's an attempt to build these uh, little translucent bits of text, but on the distributed web rather than in a Git. Yeah. So they're using the IPFS infrastructure. Very interesting. They are uh, significantly hampered by their their name convention. Their, oh God, yes. Um, kind of like the original massive, but even yes. worse. <laughs> uh, just just quickly before I leave, uh, my my attempt in that space in, is uh, hyper knowledge. It's very theoretical. Doesn't exist yet, but I'm getting a bit closer to speaking about it as a reality now. That's another conversation. Ciao, ciao. Thank you. Have a good one. What's for dinner, Lauren? <laughs> it's a disaster. <laughs> How does it taste? Good. <laughs> good. I'm not impressing anyone tonight. Oh, okay. So messy is good if it's information, but not if it's dinner. I don't know. I make some pretty yeah. mean messes myself. Yeah, but, uh, that's fair enough. Messy I mean, it's in the presentation, and if it's just you, then actually, but I find I find that I present very well to myself for the most part as well. So that's a gift. I love, I love myself like that, you know. <laughs> that is truly a gift. As opposed to, you know, when you're alone, just sort of like eating out of the refrigerator and, you know, maybe doing something in the pot on the, on the stove. Yes, it's, it's and stuff. then eating it out of the pot over the sink. Okay. Now, don't talk to me about dishes, though. <laughs> <laughs> There's some mess for you. Um, keep going a little bit more, or, um, or maybe. Maybe we're good to kind of wrap up. Um, I would, I would just, again, you know, <clears throat> well, not again, but I, I just wanted to, to say I um, am here to um, here to make sure that whatever <clears throat> I've got factors that that of use can be used and not not to extract. I, I mean at this point I'm just I, I want to collaborate, I want to uh, incorporate and um, we're we're going through our entity change to uh, become a cooperative and I would love to figure out how that can work with um, with what other people are doing here. Um, and uh, yeah, just just putting that out there. Uh, thank you, Michael. Sounds good. I I wonder if uh, we're to the point where we need a flotilla website. Uh, Vincent and I kind of there there actually was a temporary website, um, but it's not quite the right name. Um, but but maybe we maybe we should we should put one together. I, I love the ephemerality of Flotilla. I feel like there's a, a kind enough. of emergent quality. Sorry, garbage truck coming by. Um, and and I feel like there's there's emergent 
organizations that will spin off of Flotilla, but uh, that's just yeah, my maybe. two cents. And and Michael, um, Peter and I had been speaking about um, this idea of the Consilience Guild. Um, so starting to think through various cooperative structures that might interface with these kinds of tools. And so I would love to have that conversation with you offline um, around the cooperativization uh, of the space. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I'm talking with other people too, and it's also <clears throat> it's also incestuous in a good way. You know that there are all these entities that are, you know, three or four of them know each other, and you know, you get surprised by somebody who's doing something in the space every day. Peter, I was I was in that that meeting yesterday yep. um, where um, uh, social now I'm forgetting the name um, social roots. Social Roots was presenting and thinking, oh my God, you know, they've got to be part of this. And yeah. They so, are actually. I'd love to talk to you, love to talk to you more, Benjamin. And yeah. <laughs> uh, Christina actually is is kind of like um, uh, an auntie to to many of us. Um, uh, and she's in she's in once in a while in uh, Matter Most and things like that. So yeah, Lauren and I go back with her, and um, I know Vincent's been in touch with her quite a lot as well. Yeah. And, yeah. and with Jerry, yeah, basically Lauren and I and Jerry and Christina and Michael Linton and Robert Best, mostly, and, and Mariette Popich, um, those were like regular every Thursdays. More or less, that was like in the same spot in the week as, as the main OGM call for like a while, quite a while. <laughs> ecosystem mapping that was e ecosystem mapping so, good times <laughs> it feels it does it does feel like i, I was going to say it, it continues to kind of like circle around and do the same thing but it actually feels like it's starting to layer up and and get bigger and broader and so that's that's the cool thing in the past you know a couple of years it feels like um it feels like the we're fractal. building something rather than just like <laughs> circling around uh, that as the circling around part went on for a long time. But yeah, and it's like a lot of lily pads in the estuary or, you know, something like that. And, but the, there are more um, aggregations and, you know, flotilla style. Yeah. It's on. <laughs> it is on. <laughs> Can I say something? Well, Yes, yeah. please. So I think your pitch is pretty terrible. Um, Massives? Yeah. Yeah. And you, you it's know, it's you hard to even call it a pitch. Yes, yeah. I, I totally agree. It's terrible. Well, that um, story about 1978, I didn't really get, get that either. But go ahead, Lauren. <laughs> well, the, the, so the punchline, I didn't make the punchline no, no, no. explicit. Lo but OK, but back, let, hold on. Let, let, let Lauren go. It's OK. So, so, I mean, clearly you don't have to convince me of anything because I know whatever you're cooking up is super important. So it's not like necessarily like trying to woo me. I mean, I'll, I'll sit for seven hours if you want to while you develop your pitch until it's like understandable. But it's not, it, you know, um, you, you know, if we want to go into like the sexy metaphors, it just seems like a bunch of guys here masturbating. And I, I'm not understanding like what you're talking about. And I want to understand because I want to express to other people um, why we need massive wiki. And I know we do. I'm not, I'm not doubting you. I'm just saying I want to have a understandable thing that I can explain. And maybe it's that um, what... GitHub did for software developers, Massive Wiki will do for normal people. I don't know. Maybe that's it. Maybe it's a small I, I, I think, um, uh, thanks, thanks, Lauren, uh, for the constructive um, advice. Um, I, I was able to say here in this, with this group, you know, we need more people doing Massive Wiki because I knew, I knew more or less nobody needs a pitch to, to at least hear that. Um, maybe they need a pitch to act on it. 
Um, the I, I I wouldn't even bother with pitches for massive wiki. Um, it's it's a lot more about uh, here's here's something that's you know here's something that we're doing. Um, so um, I just have to I have an important interruption, which I I I'm just with you, Pete, because because I love you and I love to hang out and do stuff. <laughs> And if you're into it and you think it's important, it's it's good enough for me, actually. Yeah. So that's been my. Yeah, I appreciate I that. Yeah. It's important to voice these uh, more specific questions, so I appreciate that too. Uh, so the the specific question isn't uh, what is Massive Wiki good for. It's it's more about um, uh, um, one of the one of the personal wikis I started, and I don't know if this is going to turn into a social thing or not. But but it's like I've got a mus uh, I've got a wiki about pop music um, and how cool it is and the different you know the bands and songs and you know uh, the producers and who's you know who did what on this song and why it sounds cool. So it's when when I talk to the public about what Massive Wiki is good for, it's not going to be about Massive Wiki. It's going to be an application of Massive Wiki that you go, yeah, I want to I want to be doing that. Um, so. And then, you know, the, the pitch is the pitch is about the application and how important it is to your life and not about the technology underneath it. I, I tend to remain optimistic in, in, in being able to take the best of this and that and, and mash it up. So I'm still I'm always looking for those opportunities. You know. um, best of what and mash massive for, massive for example or or whatever else it might be you know i mean given given there's a, a okay lauren have a great night enjoy your dinner take care um yeah given given the uh well the, the relationship and the trust and the love and all that um as a, as a ground then uh that's like soil from you know for for a variety of, of uh Fertility, <laughs> yeah. diversity in, in expression. So, yeah. that sounded very poetic, but it was kind of crap. I'm sorry, but <laughs> anyway. No, I, I get it. It makes sense. I think yeah, we've already identified some things to look at and, and go into in terms of Kiko Ab um, and, and what we have going on already and, and how to experiment and, and test. So, I you mentioned grants, and so did Lauren. Um, uh, so that sounds to me like a trove thing, um, uh, even though you could do it in massive. Okay, maybe that's it. It's simple, simple answer. Yeah, could be. Um, I, and of course, I would love to help put it in massive for you, but it's probably Airtable and trove, especially because it's got you know Vincent's already got organizations and opportunities and individuals and things like that so mm -hmm. um the, another another component of that the terrible uh terrible pitch is that uh and even i have trouble kind of knowing what i'm going to use massive for um uh it's not you know the 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 beauty of it and the power of it it's the unstructuredness and then that's also a big part of that makes it hard to use. You know, it's like starting off with a blank piece of paper, um, and it's like, okay, what should I draw? It's like, well, you could draw anything, you know, but tell me what to draw. So, uh, wikis in general and massive is something like that, where you know um, you have to figure out um, where somebody has to teach you. Here's how you structure knowledge. You know, here's the kinds of knowledge you could structure. Um, here's the ways to use it you know, every day in your life. Um, all of that stuff is not built into the tool uh, in the way that it's built into Trove and most tools. Interesting. I mean, I have other questions I could feel, but I don't know if we're trying to wrap up, but also um, maybe, maybe you need to bake, bake it longer in the oven, you know, could be you didn't sort of identify I it's it's, it's with, actually you know? two things right the um in, instead of having the massive wiki thing bake longer it's actually um a lot of a lot of the development that we need to do with massive wiki and we're still not you know um been taking a bit of a break I guess maybe doing 
other stuff, other sovereigns and stuff like that. But um, it's just getting the generic capabilities of Massive and the generic usability of Massive going. And then you layer applications on top of that, right? Oh, you need a personal knowledge base. Oh, you need a collective knowledge base. Oh, you, you know, you want to have um, a website that uh, that promulgates your pattern language. Um, so all of those things aren't really massive wiki, they're applications of massive wiki or applications on top of massive wiki. And those things haven't even started baking yet, or they haven't even, you know, most of those are not even started yet. Fair enough. Well, but yet, okay. I have observed something over your shoulder of, you know, a variety of things that you have been doing. So it's not like there's nothing. Well, yeah. there's, yeah, yeah, there's a bunch of little stuff, but, um, uh, but, um, uh, it, it's funny that, so the, I don't know if it was me blurting out, you know, we need to do massive wiki more. A lot of it is, um, it's a chicken and egg thing with the applications and the infrastructure. So we need, we need more to drive the infrastructure of massive wiki more, but to do that, you kind of need active use cases and people actually using it and breaking it and telling you, you know, it doesn't do this right now. Um, but then, of course, the chicken and egg situation is that, well, I, I can't host an application on Massive Wiki because it's not there enough or nobody told me how to use it enough or nobody, you know, there isn't an application that I need it for yet. Or you haven't you haven't poked through my attic, Pete, and told me this is the application for you, you know. So it, it's that application right. so, and infrastructure thing. So Kiko Lab is like begging for, for something then. I could put it like that. Okay. And, and if we didn't guess right, then... Do, do you know you what it is? Or? I, no, so the, the next one. Uh, no, so if it's not no the idea. grant database, the um, uh, I think it's the knowledge repository. Um, mm -hmm. But um, and and Lauren's Lauren wants to do that, and it's also first up for knowledge repository is is actually Trove, because Trove is easier to sync up with because it's actually got a structure, right? Yeah, and that makes sense. But the knowledge repository would be a great thing in in a massive wiki. Cool. Well, Especially so then then even then, the if you put the knowledge repository in you know if you connect it up to Trove the way that I think you guys have been doing it, uh, you connect it up to Trove, it's immediately usable, right? You can sort stuff, you can look at a particular meeting, you can see the resources for a particular meeting. If you if we just lifted and shifted knowledge repo into a massive wiki, the it's not super useful until you've got a, another set of people who are going, wow, I want to data mine, you know, a through line about um, um, about race um, or about uh, cults and and the psychology, you know, psychology of um, uh, separation. Um, you know, I want to I might want to mine through the knowledge repository and create, uh, you know, a set of pages around that in the, in the um, Kiko Lab knowledge repository. So it's not just lifting and shifting it. It doesn't get interesting and useful until there's essentially applications that you've built on top of the knowledge repository, right? Which don't come for free and there aren't, you know, and they're not emergently obvious or they're not, they're not obviously obvious. Um, they are emergent, I guess, maybe as a way to say it. That was really helpful. Thank you. Yeah, I appreciate that. And uh, yeah, that's a good way to think about it. Very cool. Oh, really helpful. I really appreciate it. What's that? I couldn't hear you. Oh, I was just saying it's it's really useful to take in. I appreciate it. Sorry, my my sound's bad. Yeah. I guess. No, it's fine. When yeah, when you were leaning back, it was fuzzy. Yeah, I'm 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 in a new place. I'm in I'm in my mother's basement, seeing my uh, my mom for the first time in a year and a half. Oh wow! <laughs> and then escaping into the basement. Okay. Okay. Good luck. <laughs> uh, <laughs> hope she's awesome. doing well. Hope you're having a good one. She's doing fine. She just wants me to come up out of the basement. So I guess. Yeah. That's <laughs> All right. Well, maybe it's a good place to wrap. This is an awesome call. Thanks.
Sounds good. Super psyched. And um, next next week I'll be with my kids. I might still get to chime in with them while I do this stuff. Okay. Yeah, you cut out again. Thanks, Michael. all. Great one. Good weekend. And uh, until soon. <laughs> Yeah, we'll jam again soon. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Peter. Nice talking. Thank I get it. I'm on board. I'm an evangelist. I'm going to be out there. At first, I got to get my own contributions going. And then, yeah, I, there's some other use cases that I'm tracking that I'm super excited about. So I think and, and me too. we're I've got all right some. on track. Awesome. Thanks. All right. Take care, everyone. Bye.